19 Nocturne Boulevard. Nocturne Boulevard? Not far. When you hit Howard, hang a right. Howard meets Philip at a weird kind of angle. Then you cross James and Paul. You can't miss Nocturne. It's just past the automatic. 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Your address for suspenseful stories of the speculative, strange, and supernatural. Tonight's story is Sword Kvetch. Yes, this is 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Won't you step inside? Did you have any trouble finding it? What do you mean, what kind of a place is it? Why, it's a road through a dark and spooky forest that leads to a castle. Can't you tell? What? I could write a ballad already. Oh, no. No, no, no. That is not your job. Shh. I'm composing. <sighs> Typical. Evil castle looms ahead. Um, nighttime. Need to rest my head. You can't rhyme head with a head. It rhymes, doesn't it? Ugh. I'm getting another sword. You always say that. But you know you couldn't do without me. <sighs> and who could you ever pass me off to? Someone diff. Master! Master! Mm? Master! Shh, 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 shh. But master! You see what I have here, my smelly little homunculi? But master! I'll turn this drop of water into an equal measure of dust. Why? It's a vital transmutation. A change like this could make a great deal of difference. To a thirsty cockroach? No, no. You have to see how, yes, on a tiny scale, this could be a negligible change. <sighs> Sir. But if you do this a million times at once with a million drops of water, you could cause an entire lake to suddenly turn to dust, ruining agriculture. And then with a simple reverse, water from dust. Good. Lovely. Can I report now? It's kind of urgent. Uh, what? Oh, uh, of course. Go ahead. Are you listening? Of course. <sighs> what? Why did you... Listening now? Yes, get on with it. Someone is approaching the castle. Oh, well. Uh, set up the defenses. It's an Amazon. Oh, that's different. Uh, still the defense. No monsters in labor. I thought it laid eggs. Well, not after you did one of your little experiments on it. And it's not best pleased about it. Oh. And the man-eating vines. What? I didn't... They're not giving birth, are they? They're through. What? Man-eating vines. Amazon warrior. Oh. Oh. Kale, I don't like, like this. You mean the way nothing at all tried to stop us from strolling right up to the front door of the evil wizard's castle? No. I meant the two-headed gargoyles. They're so passe. Of course that's what I mean. There must be a trap. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Me too. You haven't any eyes, I'm Don't alarm. nitpick. No reception committee. No moot monster. The gargoyles? They're tacky as hell, but I don't sense any magic there. Well then... I like it. It's what I do. Master! Stop banging, Jiggly. They're at the door. Tell them we don't want any. <laughs> the Amazon? Oh, yes. Oh, she got through the defenses. <laughs> yes, of course. What are you going to do? Uh, the usual. <sighs> Send me down to find out what she wants. Good idea. Let me know what she says. If it's abandoned, that would explain. 
explain the lack of defenses. The High Council doesn't send a quaestor to an empty castle. They might not know. Yes. Why don't you just go and point that out? Hail, warrior! <laughs> Manners. Who hails me? I represent Mazarin, wizard of the crooked pit, mage to the eighth tier, sorcerer. Yes, but can he dance? Shh! I have come to face your wizard. Open the gate. What is your charge? Mazarin is an exceedingly busy mage. Freaking tears? I am Kyle Karsfinker, blade maiden of the ninth rank, slayer of three gorgons and participant in the slaughter of the great lead armadillo of mercy. With a minor in uh, songwriting. And I am charged by the High Council of Her Most Royal Majesty, Luria the Balladeer, to find and recover the missing Prince Tupin of Vagon. And my boss is supposed to care. Why? The scribes say the prince is here. A captive endurance vial under the thumb of this boss of yours. Excessive. And thus have I come to reclaim him. Oh, right. Hold on, I'll go tell the wizard. Where'd he go? Ducks behind one of those excrescences. I didn't see any of those. The gargoyles. So, we wait for the wizard to speak. Oh, you're not. Green and crooked, small and beady. 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 Eyes are beady. He was more seedy. Ah, small and seedy. His locks were lank and his eyes were beady. <sighs> Sire. <laughs> She's here for him. <laughs> him? Oh, well. Well, that's simple then. I'll just unglaze him and... Oh, no, you can't just hand him over. Why not? Then she'll go away problem solved. Tradition. Ring a bell. Tradition? Oh, you're not going to say I have to fight to the death over a trifle like... No, but you're supposed to make her do tasks to earn him. So she'll spread worry of your cunning and deviousnessness. And so she'll keep him once she gets him. Oh, I'm far too busy to come up with some silly tasks. What does tradition say? I'll make you up some note cards. Want me to let her in? And Amazon? Well... Don't they sleep in barns or something? I certainly wouldn't want to be the one to suggest it to her. I'll find her and tell her you will speak to her at dinner. I will? Tradition. Fine. Tell her, then come back and find me some... robes. This way, and the wizard will be with you shortly. Roomy. Kinda dusty, ain't it? Hard to keep help in an evil castle. Hmm. Dusty? <laughs> Impressive. Oh, rats. Well, <laughs> rats no. It's something I've been working on. You could use it back home. Shh. You could finally get your quarters clean. Shh. What? Nothing. Uh, mighty wizard. I've come to recover the most noble Prince Tupin. This is my quest. Do not stand in my way. Oh, of course not. What? Mister. Hmm? Oh, right. As long as you, um, you... Can overcome my challenges three. Can overcome three challenges. Close enough. Of course. Name your challenges. Oh, well... You forgot the cards. Oh, the cards... My, my great master will issue you each challenge at the break of dawn on three successive days. You will then have until sunset on the same day to complete each one. Morning. Why not start now? Tradition. Tradition, my lady. Fine. What do we do now then? Dinner? Show me the prince so I know I'm not wasting my time. He's glass. Much less irritating uh, that way. Uh, Jafar, the great wizard, finds the company of mere mortals a burden. 
He turns him into glass to show his mighty contempt. That's a lot of contempt. It's rather a lot of prints. All right, oh great wizard. Let's just get this straight right up front. When I beat your challenges, you'll turn him back to normal before letting me take him, right? Well, that goes without saying. After the first challenge, he will be returned to flesh. After the second, he will awaken. The third, you may take him. Good. And good riddance. I don't want to have to cart around a giant glass statue. Must weigh a ton. And it would be rather unfortunate if I dropped him. Not really. Nice. You said something about dinner. More port, sire? Yes, yes. Now, um, if you can picture this fork as an oncoming enemy, uh, then the napkin, I mean the entrapment grass, remember, would of course slow it. Your port. Over there, beside the battlefield. <sighs> Where was I? Oh, yes. Slow him <sighs> and eventually stop him. Clever. Really? Immobilizing an enemy makes him an easy target. So you put your strength into archers to pick off the enemy soldiers stuck in the field like... Topiary. Like so many garden gnomes. Hmm, not bad at all. I could even write a song about that. Oh, please don't. He'll turn you to glass. Shut up. I didn't say anything. Not you. I have this curse. I am not cursed. Of a sword. It talks to me. Do you often hear weapons talk? <laughs> no, really. Here. Say something. Great. Now she's in a big snit. Don't make me look bad. Whenever she's in the sheath, I'm the only one who can hear her. You saw it as a girl? Isn't that somehow counterintuitive? Big words from a goblin, bub. <sighs> See? Sleep tight. I can't believe you would embarrass me that way. Embarrass you? Who called who cursed? No, I said you were my curse, not that you were accursed. Oh, that's different. <laughs> How's that dumb wizard going to have any respect for me now? Who cares? He's old and evil. He's not that old. And evil? Oh, that's his job. Jiggly! <laughs> yes, master? What did you think you were doing insulting an Amazon like that? I, I didn't... You called her a lummox! She was... She was playing you, sire. I was only defending you. What? Playing what? Yeah, playing games. You, you know no one ever actually listens to you when you rant on about one of your inventions. And there she is. Oh, you clever. You're so smart. Blech. And you. Of course people listen to me. I don't. Hmm. You're just a familiar. Don't remind me. Sorry, what I meant is she's trying to soften you up to get you to like her so the test will be easier. What's wrong with that? <sighs> you have a reputation to uphold, my mighty lord. Oh, I really don't. And if it gets out that you're a pushover, every Tom, Dick, and Harry will be at your doorstep looking to get something from you. <laughs> and when will you get anything done? So, wizards don't wake up as early as warriors. So what? It's dawn. He said dawn. Barely. Sit. Nah, I'm hyped. I'm ready for something really difficult. A good fight. Ah. The challenge is... Yes? Now, if you think the challenge is too hard, you can back out and go away. You know. Right. Not likely. I am not adverse to leaving someone alive to spread word of my cruelty and... And... Cunning. And cunning. And? And... And meanness. And the challenge. Right. You must empty my entire moat into a single tankard. Oh, jeez. Are you sure? Um... Uh, yes. Yes, that's the first challenge. You want to tell him, or should I? All right, well, here's the deal. 
I could go out into the yard, smack a big hole in the bottom of a tankard, and then cupful by cupful, pour slimy moat water into the now bottomless tankard, until there's nothing left in your pond but salt, dying fish, and a pissed off moat monster. Oh. Uh. Mm. Would that uh, work? Uh, yeah. Or I could. I can go on to another one. Nah, you can't switch horses in midstream. Is. is everything alright? Just a moment! Cha-ching! What? You aced it! He might demand you actually go through with it, but he seems surprisingly reasonable for an evil wizard. I still don't think he's all that evil. He turns people to glass and makes grass that grabs you. And I bring in archers to kill the immobilized troops. All right, we've got this settled. He lets his familiar be part of the decision process? I talk to a sword. Uh, yes, almighty oh, wizard! Well, <clears throat> Rather than have to uh, restock my pond, Booyah. we're going to take it as read that you've completed the first task and start fresh in the morning. Well, what do we do for the rest of the day? Um, well, um, you could uh, come and see my workshop. Spare me. That would be great. Fascinating. No, really, spare me. While we're there, you can turn the prince back to flesh. Oh, right, of course. Couldn't you leave me with a blasted goblin? At least he can hold a conversation. Shut up. What? Oh, right, the sword. Hmm. Did I mention that I figured out how to turn water to dust and vice versa? Uh, mostly only a drop to time, just yet. Mind you, since it's very hard to control in large quantities, um, uh, well, except for last night. Oh, is that what that was? But I, I was... Or try to make an impression. The mighty warrior comes a rage, goes into the castle dark and drear, wondering what sort of wicked mage might be he that lived here, and whether she would see another day. You wrote that. Just last night? I, I couldn't sleep. It's not finished. I work on very small amounts at a time. No need really to enchant huge things. Save space and Lord knows. Who wants seven tons of aspic just lying around? <laughs> on that culinary note, Master, do you plan to dine here in the Grand Hall? Dine? But it's hardly even dark out. Oh! Well. But no wonder you keep lighting candles. I didn't even notice. I was so caught up. Dinner? Of course, of course. Shall we? Ooh! Ah, I hadn't even thought about it, but I am famished. And you, sword? Oh, don't be silly. Swords don't eat. She's been awfully quiet, though. I've been trying to ignore you. You're acting like a scullery maid who got smiled at by a lord. What? And it will get you into trouble. Something wrong? No. This mage is the enemy. He's enchanting you. Nothing. Sleep well. Challenge it done. I'll let. Check me for magic. Why? You're the one who said he's enchanting me. I meant he's charming you. Not like charm charm, but like... Boring you into submission. So you don't really suspect a spell? I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Oh, that's a relief. Rise and shine! It's dawn. Hello? Hmm. Must be already down there. It will. <laughs> Figures an Amazon wouldn't have anything interesting in the way of undies. Lace it right up something fierce, I guess. What's this? The great and mighty Queen Luria, blah blah blah, doth decree. Oh, she doth, she. Blah blah blah, that Prince Tupin should be returned safely to a royal residence in order to be joined in marriage and alignment with her eldest daughter, Princess Kale. Oh, the boss ain't gonna like this. The test for today 
Where is that idiot goblin, anyway? Is for you to clean out the stables of my 30 terribly ferocious horses. All right, but this one's going to be easy, too. Unless they've been eating fermented oats. Remember that one time at Bard Camp? Oh? Of course. I spent my entire life around the royal stables. Horses like me. I suppose we could call it even. I could show you a few more... Nonsense. Nonsense? Silly. First, I might as well prove I can do something to earn my keep. And second, if it's such a test, I can't imagine the poor horses having to live there without it being cleaned. Which way? Oh, um, I'll take you there. That would be lovely. Oh, is there anything in the test that says I can't ask someone for help? I'm not sure. Jiggly would know, but... Well, I figured it wouldn't hurt to ask. But there's only really one, well, person you could call on to help. And Jiggly isn't fond of any kind of animals. Oh, he's not who I was thinking of. What? Well, who then? Oh, no. Not until you decide if I can. I don't want to give it away. Oh, oh. shall I guess? No, nope. just decide and then I'll tell you. All right. Yes, you can ask someone, but I can't constrain them into helping you. <laughs> Fine. You want to help? Me? I'll do all the heavy lifting, but I thought... Maybe once the bulk is gone, there's plenty of dust in a good old hayloft. Oh! <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, God. No, 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 no! She wasn't supposed to have any help at all! How could you have missed that part? You weren't there to cue me, so you can't complain. What do you think of my beard? Your beard? Why? I trimmed it down a bit. I think it's rather dashing. Dashing? Makes me look a bit of a rake hail. Do you think I should wear the green or the black robe? I like the green better myself. But black is so very... Oh... Manly. Oh, you moron. <laughs> She's supposed to marry the prince. <laughs> what, what, whatever do you mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, 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 what did you think I was doing? I really hate to burst your bubble, especially since you actually eat and bathe right now. But I saw a note in her gear, some proclamation. She gotta get the prince back and marry him. She has to? Said Princess Kale, big as life. Oh. Lucky for you, you were in the barn when he dosed it. No one likes the smelly Amazon. Do you remember if I packed my teal chemise? Isn't that the one you only wear for state occasions? Um, yes. The one you say rides too tight through the chest and you hate to wear, except that it brings out your... eyes? I did our packet. I distinctly recall the words, Fooey, when I go to do battle, who's looking at my... eyes? Threat. How can you stand him? He's so dull. Dull? What do you mean? I mean... What could possibly be more completely boring than turning dust to water? Oh yes, turning locusts to aspic. That was way more boring. It was not. It's important magic. He's very clever. Clever like a fox. No, that's wrong. Wait, right. Anyway, forget it. I mean, he's deliberately being disarming. Speaking of disarming. What are you doing? Just what you asked me to do. Spearing you. What? No reason I'd need a sword at dinner. Even with an evil wizard. Oh. <laughs> so where's this princess? Is she one of those who likes to make an entrance? <laughs> Man, she must have seriously kicked her ass. <laughs> Is she hot? I'd actually forgot. Hey, is that her? Oh, man. She's kind of chunky. Oh, for a hammer. You look very nice. Very. Ahem. 
Aren't you a little underdressed? I... who? Who's that? You don't recognize him? Oh, the prince! Greetings, your highness. So pleased to see you upright, or at least sitting down. Have a seat, milady. Thank you so much, kind sir. Hmm. I don't have to stand. I'm royalty. What? That crack about me not getting up when you came in. It's not like you're my mom or anything. Princes don't have to stand. Please, let me leave, boss. I'm gonna kill him. I didn't mean anything. Go, then. As you command. Well, you sounded very critical. I don't put up with that from anybody. Not even other royalty. Who's there? Where is it? Unhand me! Hey, 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 I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. It's as if I know what to do with a sword. Well, there is this prince. <laughs> prince Tubin? Yeah, what a prize. If he's that bad, why did your boss kidnap him in the first place? Kidnap? You think, oh, the little brat ran away from home. He said, I want to be a big bad wizard. The boy doesn't even scrub floors. Oh, no, my break a nail. He says, then I want to live forever. Uh, give me some uh, tree of life fruit. And, and then he says he wants a bowl of only green M&Ms. And then he says he, and he wants it, and he wants this. Uh, finally, when he says, I just want to outshine everybody else in the world, Mazarin takes him up on it and turns him into glass and shuts him up. That's pretty restrained for an evil wizard. Yeah, it's not so much. The, the evil thing, we just spread that around to keep away the, the well, the tourists and the... Uh, the traveling salesman and those religious types. So, the prince is awake? Oh, man. And I'm missing it. And if she doesn't clock him by the end of the evening, I'm no familiar. Nah, she's under strict orders. Yeah, I know. You know what? Uh, I, I was you know, uh, scouting for for my master and found the, the parchment and her stuff. Uh, <clears throat> he was really disappointed, you know? Disappointed? Your master... Why? That the princess will be marrying the prince. Big whoop. She has to marry someone. Besides, it's years off. Yeah, but he... Nothing. He what? Oh, it's kind of amazing, really. I, I never seen my boss like this before. You know, picking out clothes by more than just smell. And then finding out that she's spoken for. He's interested in a princess? That's kind of creepy. Why? He may be a wizard, but he is a man. I'm pretty sure. Perv. Hey, she may not be my type. Needs a longer nose, couple of warts, a lot more hair. But she's not so hard on the eyes. You should be more supportive. You're a perv too. The princess is only 13. She's really tall then. Huh? Have you, like, ever even, like, seen the princess? Your lady warrior? Oh my god. You thought my boss was a princess? Gads. Half the girls in the country are named Kale. For the great queen who led her people out of darkness and taught them to fight? Oh. Uh, oh! I, I gotta go tell him! You mean, your master is really into her? I mean, she's like... <sighs> oh, yeah, and, and he's... Well, he's like zap, 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 zap! No. I thought he was just softening her up. <laughs> are you kidding? Yeah, he wouldn't know where to begin. Short of turning her to aspic. With the extra horses, I can get him there and make it back in about two weeks. Back? Well, yes. Hmm. Why? Oh, to... to return the horses. Oh. Oh, of course. I may not be here. I have a big trip coming up, but Jiggly can see that you have a place to sleep. Or, or I could always send someone with them. Sire! Uh, sire! There has been a grave error. What? It's entirely my fault, I admit. Wait, what happened to the prince? He fell asleep. I think he ate too much. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> Good one, sire. What is your news, mannequin? Ah, uh, yes. Um, can you come over here, maybe? I, I can leave. No, master. Just spit it out. She's not the one. Not the one what? Not? What? 
Marrying may the ants pray. Your goblin has lost its mind. Not marrying the prince? You're not marrying the prince? Me? Who oh, gods no? But he is saw. Princess Kale is marrying him. Aye, she's my cousin. So I'll arrange for her 18th birthday. Oh, oh, if they ask, can I tell them that you'll turn him back to glass until then? Not you. No. I'm not worthy of such as him. Besides, he's years younger than me. Then you can marry anyone you want. Once I successfully complete my quest. That's why I took it. Did you have someone in mind? No. Why? Uh, nothing. Just... This is disgusting. Just kiss her. But there's a third test, isn't there? Oh, yes. The third test was to see if you could listen to the wizard for an hour or so without falling asleep. Boom, you win. Kiss her. Oh, can we do that? The whole test thing was mostly because I was really, really bored. Oh, and tradition. We should hold off the kissing until I complete my quest. There's always a chance the prince will get lost in the forest on the way back. Now, there's an idea. Poor princess. She throws things. I think they're actually well matched. Perhaps an escort would be helpful. Hmm? And then you can finish telling me about your research into the relationship between the angle of sunlight and the movements of pond slime. Only if you promise to complete that ballad you were writing and sing it for me on the trip. Oh, no. Tonight's episode, Sword Quetch, was written by Julie Hoverson. In this episode, Kale was played by Julie Hoverson, Mazarin was Gareth Bowley, Amalan was Crystal Baker, Jiggly was Renaud LaBeouf, and Prince Tupin was Abner Cenaris. The music for this episode was produced by Celestial Eon Project and Mati Palanen and is used under a Creative Commons license. The music of Celestial Eon Project is available on jamendo.com or at www.mikseri.net slash essence, E-S-S-E-N-C-E. -E. The 19 Nocturne theme song was by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com. Sound effects were found on soundsnap.com and sonomic.com. Sound and mastering was done by Julie Hoverson. All persons, places, and events in the story were fictitious, or used in a fictitious manner, and are not meant to reflect any persons, places, or things, living, dead, or undead. Questions? Comments? We would love to hear from you. Contact us at 19nocturne at live.com, that's 19nocturne at live.com, or check out our website at www.19nocturneboulevard.com. Also check out Julie's blog on writing, acting, and editing for audio drama at 19nocturne, that's 19 spelled out, 19nocturne.libsyn.com This presentation is copyright 2009 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions. I meant he's charming. Not like a charm charm. Just by being a sweet talker. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.